Hello and welcome to Trains in Vietic and we're back on my desk and I got my controller out. So I haven't had this out since uh, before we moved. It was one of the first things I packed away. So what we're going to do in this episode is actually have a proper look at this, see what's in the box, check everything's working. Uh, clear a lot of the settings because a lot of things will be changing with a new layout and then we'll see what else happens after that so let's go on to the titles and then we can see what's in here So this is my controller, it's an ECOS by ESU, it's a second generation, you'll notice that there's some square paper stuck on it, that's where I have had to send it off for repairs in the past, but everything got resolved so it should be working. I know I don't have instructions for this in the box, but let's go and do an unboxing. One Big bit of advice is keep all your packaging for your ECOS as this is basically just floating in there. So where about we... That's interesting. Where about um, this... Where about I moved... I hit buttons. Yes, yeah, so the packaging for this is actually quite amazing. As you can see, it's basically floating in a bubble. So to do damage to this, you need to go to some quite strong limbs. So I have always kept the packaging and always will. So We have one large uh, transformer, which is 15 volts at 21 volts. And uh, five amps at 4.2 amps. And it needs good ventilation. It's a switch in power supply. We're center positive, if I read that correctly. So that's all good. And then you have a figure of eight connection. Something else I keep in for bots is this, which I'll chat about later on. And here is her ECOS. You can see I just uh, put it in the box. I should have given it a nice clean. So on the front we have a nice big touch screen and for function buttons go and emergency stop and your local buttons, your navigation switches and your powered throttles. What I mean by powered throttles is as you swap locos, your throttles will end up at the appropriate position. Then on the back, we have two feet and then a battery compartment. When you have this running, you want, uh, what is it? It is double uh, A rechargeable double A batteries in it. When you're not using it, take the batteries out just to protect the electronics. Then we have several connectors. Let me just do that. 
so we have a power barrel jack we have programming check which you can disconnect programming check which you can disconnect alts which i never worked out what it is three equals links so you can have things at your base station and then equals extender you then have your uh, network then you have your s88 then you have your sniffer port and a few other ports the, one of the interesting things with the ecos is the sniffer port which means that you can feed a second dcc system into this and this will set for information and i'm wondering if you could use the new um DCC concept wireless control system to feed into here and then send it out into your main layout. I also had this. It was probably going to get replaced. This is a S88 to Ethernet adapter by Digirail. And this is a another form of a uh, connection. So basic connections you have is a ECOS link and S88. S88 is more of an input system. I could be wrong, but the ECOS link is bi-directional. This has a design flaw that you can't just plug it into the socket. As the socket is just there and that's just a bit too short so i put these connector wires on so it plugs straight in i can't remember which way round it goes so i'll check for instructions before using it so let's power it on So you can see the transformer have two red lights and then on the back we just plug it in like so and it's starting straight off. We have a nice yellow activity bar so you can tell that it's uh, doing stuff. You have got the red button there and you can see the controllers have just moved themselves slightly. So as it haven't been used for a while it will take a little while to beat up. So hopefully we'll be there in a second. So it's beated up. It got this new error message just just there because it got no battery, but we don't need this, uh, any of these uh, plans any longer as everything's going to be new numbers and new things. So we got our throttles with all the locos that know. We have the points uh, which employ include accessories. You have your track ply diagram. You have your settings. Where about you can adjust most things and program your e course. You have your master setting, where about you can see internal booster, external booster, uh, feedback and bits like that. And then you have your help. So I believe it's set up one. What I'm after, so we got for internal booster, language, background, uh, screen flicker, 
and reset. Then we have all the links, linked devices. Then we have how everything works. Then we have all of our um, accessories. Then we have which protocols and things you're using. Then you have your network. Then you have your shuttle, shuttle train, which I never got working. Then you have got programming settings, more programming settings, more programming settings, uh, database search, more program settings. You can delete all locos, delete everything. So, deleting all locos, delete all M42, which are automatically assigned, and delete. Delete all alt, alt registering. Then we got a few more settings how we want it to start up. Then we have our event log. And all for settings. So it's not allowing me to do a factory reset, but we can do a restart. I believe I need to log in from the computer to actually do the final reset. But it's now rebooted. Uh, perhaps if we go to accessories, it will let me to delete everything. Just have a single delete when I want to mess delete. So I'll read the instructions and work out how to delete everything, but I think it is a case that I just need to um, log in. So I'll confirm this and now when we go on to the locos we can see we have no locos in it. You can set your locos to three separate uh, groups and then you can do steam, diesel and electric. You can search by name and automatic. So. That's the e course out of the box and seem to be working. So let's go and do something else. So I'm back and I bought my newest loco. So let's see how to put a loco on the e course. Things I need. Piece of track. And some wire. So what I'll do is quickly cut for a second. We're going to get everything screwed together. I've turned off the e course And I'm taking out... this little plastic connector. Next thing is to put the cable in the connector. And tighten it up and do the same on the other side. Normally I use much thicker core wire, 
but as this is just a test, I'm using this. New locos always used for the programming track, but I'm going to do for main as I've already tested it. So next job to do is to connect the test track which go just here. Always make sure to separate your tracks. And then the last job we have is to find the power connection. And plug it in. Well, that's beating. I've got this pack of rolling ro road. I might actually admit to the fact I have two of these now. And I need four ro rollers. And put this to one side. Once the system is set up, go into loco mode. Take your loco out of the pack. Roughly work out where both the wheels will go. Make sure not to touch both sides. That should cause a short circuit through your hand. And that should be on the rails. So, I can't remember how to get it to automatically detect. But we have a loco on the rails. We do a select, put down for local number, and press tick. And we have turned on the lights. I'll just adjust the camera slightly. And I have just found out the reason that this isn't doing uh, what I think it is. I thought it was a, uh, um, Yes, you decoder, it's actually a Zimbo, Zimbo decoder. I don't know when I swapped over to Zimbo, but that's an interesting decision. So it doesn't do auto detection of this, and I personally have a preference for ESU decoders but there's a lot of debate there. So if we go into loco number three we can turn on the lights, we can turn on the sound and then go and give it a bit of a movement. So I'll swap this to single and we should see two wheels moving which we have just here. So we go into properties and we can enable the functions. We want to enable all the functions up to 21.
I've, I'm surprised that Batman have changed to Zimbo decoders. But when you consider it's all about making money, we can't blame them. So I'm going back to the first page. And we can actually start programming in the thing. So function zero is a light, function one is sound. So we want to go for speaker. Function two is a break. Which I think I'll use that one. Function three, we have the ability to test. It's a single horn. So single horn. Function four is double horn. I like always like with a D equal so you can test for function. So function five is uh, also, we can enable if a permanent or momentary, so that one should be momentary. So direction light is latch, sound is latch, brake is light, latch, horn is um, momentary. So what I'll do now is gradually program it in and then over the next little while we can um, have a play. So I'm going to end it here. Thank you everybody for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell anyone. Uh, next Sunday we have got an Easter quiz at 8 o'clock uh, English time and there are some prizes to be won so uh, before that we also have the live stream on Wednesday most probably I've got stuff sorted now and um, that's about it so thank you everybody for watching remember to like subscribe comment and i'll see you all next time thank you very much richard